Mike Kripke here at Martial Arts Concepts in Gainesburg, Maryland. Uh, one of the most difficult things about right now with the coronavirus is, what are you going to do for training? So, I mean, martial arts are based upon solo training, partner training, group training, okay? So, to become a really, really good martial artist, you have to train in the room. So there's class time, obviously, where you interact with other people when you get just to work with other bodies. But to become good at any martial art, you gotta spend time working by yourself. So one of the beautiful things with the Filipino martial arts is it's fun to train with the weapons on your own. So there's a lot of ways to train. So every system I've trained in, uh, I've been in Modern Arnis, Laneko Escrima, obviously with Guru Dan for a number of years, and there's multiple, multiple single stick, double stick, stick and dagger, whips and knives and all kinds of stuff, methods you can train in, and they all have different names. So, I mean, I could probably uh, throw a lot of names and titles at you guys, but it probably won't help you when it comes to developing the ideas behind what we're doing, okay? So the concept I want to show you today is, is basically using the ASTRO. So the ASTRO is going to be your, kind of your fundamental line system for training. So um, each system uses a different kind of characterization of this. What you can think about with this is, this could either be you know, a body superimposed on this asterisk. This asterisk could also be superimposed on a target. So if I'm here, that asterisk can be superimposed on my lean hand for long range, or on my head for medium and close range, okay? Or it can be superimposed on my body as well. So when you're looking at doing your striking series, you're not just striking just that, that asterisk. You're changing targets. You're changing from the hand to the lean hand to the rear hand from the lead hand to the lead knee, from the hand to the head or the hand to the body. So it's not just the concept of just learning how to strike, it's learning how to change weapons and, and, and distinguish targets in the process, okay? So when we're talking about this, okay, you have um, your ability to go forehand to backhand, okay? So you have the diagonals, you have the horizontals, you have the verticals. The verticals can also be here too, okay? So you have verticals on this side, Okay, you also have upward strikes. You can go up, you can go up, you can go up this way as well. This is a kind of a flick with the hand turns over, the blade comes like this, and you still go up to here, okay? So Renatas are probably the more, more challenging of strikes for most people when it comes down to learning how to strike, okay? So, so what do you work on? Okay, so most of you have a relatively good familiarization with slashing, okay? So, you know, basically, um, in Lameco Escrima, particularly, we do what's called isolation work, or isolation, okay? Which basically meant you went angle one and then back, and angle one and then back, angle one and then two, two, three, okay? So you just went back and forth to isolate those lines. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a great way to train. The more time you spend getting those lines functional and, and, and clean, the better off you're gonna be. Just pay particular attention. So I have a stick here. And it's a medium to lightweight stick, okay? If I go from a lightweight stick into a sword, I have different things to think about now. I've got to worry about where is the blade coming? So I have the edge here. Am I fanning the blade, or am I actually striking with the edge of the blade, learning how to make this thing work? Okay, so just because you have a, the, the weapon system you're training in is blade-oriented, are you actually learning how to use this edge? Uh, Pay attention. Just pay attention to what you're doing. That's the big key. Okay, so once again, when you're here, you have slash lines. And I put S here for an abbreviation, so later on you can do your own shorthand, okay? So slash all these lines, okay? And you can with tick these lines too. So understand that with tick, with tick means it hits and pulls back. 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 But with tick is also meaning the fanny. So when you have when you would tick a line, it's you would take the diagonal. You would take the diagonal, you would take the horizontal. That's an abadico with tick. So you have with ticking, which means hit and pull back. You have abadico with ticking, which means you're actually fanning the line. So if I was fanning this line, it would be from here. One, two, three. This line, one, two, three. Horizontal line, one, two, three. That's not the same as going a single with tick. Okay? Redondos. Okay, so um, most redondos I see being done are very much wrist oriented. So it's too much of a flick of the wrist. Um, I think one of the things that, that, that Guru Edgar kind of drove into my head was, he, he said, he said uh, train like every strike your life depended on landing. And that it was hard enough to stop the person, okay? So if you're basing your redondos on a flick of the wrist, that's not gonna dissuade a small child. So you have to learn to prep the redondo. 
In other words, you want to make sure that when you strike, the strike goes all the way through with full power. Okay, so um, so if I was going to train this vertical line, okay, I don't want to be redondoing down here. So, which means the power stroke behind my strike is somewhere below the person's waist. Now, if they're on their knees or they're coming up off the ground, that's perfect. But what if they're facing me and I have to hit a hand or a lead hand or a rear hand on top of the head, and I'm doing this? So I'm just this is step. There's still not enough power there, okay? So what I want you to think about is when you train the redondos, okay? Think about I'm on, butts on target. I want to go all the way up over top of my head, and then I want to slash down. So I go from here with the edge of the blade or the stick pointing this way to overhead. So when I go up, big elbow motion. I go all the way through. So look, it's over. It's over, okay? So the elbow is slamming down before the tip even gets there, okay? If I was going horizontal, same thing. Okay, if I was going diagonal. So, um, the more time you spend doing so also, so, so that's close, open, same thing. I want to be able to make the elbow the driver as opposed to the hand. Also note that when I'm doing redondo, it's not breaking in front of me, it's breaking behind me. There's characters of the body, rotating there, there is letting the stick do all the work. Uh, and when you talk about using, you know, lighter, heavier, much heavier and longer, longer and heavier weapons, everything changes. If you're basing your technique on a flick of the wrist and you have to go pick up an ax handle or a piece of rebar, you're in for a really interesting experience because you can't manipulate a heavy stick the way you would a quarter inch or a half inch of your tan, okay? So train your redundant. Uh, like I said, in, when you're doing this especially, don't be in a hurry. So the tendency is to try to dab some people with speed. You can always add speed in. But if you're, if, you're, if you're going really, really fast and you're sloppy and you can't make contact, it's, you're just throwing stuff down range, which isn't gonna help, okay? All right, now, so when you say thrust on the lines, so you can thrust the uppercut lines, the horizontal lines, okay? The vertical lines, either up or down, you can thrust from here and you can thrust from here. So understand this thrusting motion can be in, you can poke them, or you can try to thrust through them, okay? So uh, pokey lines are good. Pokey lines are kind of like a, a stop hit in June Fon, where you want to stun the guy for a second and you set it up. But these long kind of hooking thrusts will get their head back very, very fast and allow you to come back with another hard shot, okay? Um, and then Punio. So, you know, we spent a lot of time working on this end of the stick, but back here when you're in close range, you need to have the ability to hit pretty, pretty hard, okay? So if I'm here and I want to go one, two, three, four, this five is underneath and there's one over top. I've never done a punio up like this before. I've done them from here, but I can't get that angle to work really well. Now, so with just these elements, one, two, three, four, five, slash, with tick, redondo, thrust, and punio, you have hundreds of combinations you can work on, right? So let's say if I just wanted to go slash, thrust, punio, okay? So slash, thrust, punio, slash, thrust, punio. Slash, thrust, punio. Okay? There's two of several hundred, okay? Take two elements, say three elements, you can have a hard time to keep track of fours and fives. But if it's ones or twos or threes, you can make your own combinations. And you know, here's the thing. Um, when you're making these combinations in your mind, you want to think, is it viable? Is it probable? Is it possible? So when you're pr practicing these combinations, think about the scenario you're trying to do. You know, are you trying to get the guy to back his head out a little bit? So you can come in and you can crash and you can hit, okay? So weave a story behind the combination to make it more viable in your own mind. And I'm telling you right now, document the ones that work the best for you. You should have notes. You should have trainings. I, I've been doing a really good job putting notes on the board. Uh, and those notes are hard won. That's, that's for literally hundreds of hours of guru and thousands of hours training on my own. So you should be making notes of the ones that do work really well for you. And hey, I'd be thrilled to have you guys share those combinations, those two counts, three counts, four counts, and five counts with me so that I can enhance my own training. All right, so once you've got this side worked out, you gotta get to here. So you know, everyone's gonna be good on this side, right? It's going from this side. Being able to do the same thing here on both sides. 
So if you can go one, two, three, four, you can go one, two, three, four on that side as well. So this is not double stick training. This is still single stick. You should be able to strike on one side, right, and then strike on the other side, if not as well, at least close to it. You're gonna get your hand hit, okay? Also, you're gonna have a neurological advantage on one side of your body. You came out of the womb with the ability to use both hands, but you have a predilection using one side more than the other. So, one of the beauties behind the Filipino martial arts and boxing and kickboxing is, it allows you to develop both sides at, at the same time, okay? So, one of the most incredible things is, watch people do double sticks for the first time. They have a really, really hard time with left hand if they're, if they're right-handed, okay? But they start catching on, and they start developing some great acuity. So, while you're training these, okay, make sure you spend time training the right hand and the left hand. I would say 70-30, 60-40, left to right. If you're, if you're already good with your right hand, great. Suck it up, start with your left hand, okay?